Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to Linaro Connect. My name is Lee Gong. I'm the CEO at Linaro. So it's great to see many of you here. Uh, it's also a little bit strange because I'm sitting behind my computer at 3.45 or 47 in the morning <laughs> speaking to a virtual audience. So this is a new e experience for, for me as well. Uh, this is the second Connect of this year. So typically Linaro holds two Connects each year. Uh, in April, we were supposed to hold the first Connect in Budapest, but due to the coronavirus situation, so we have to cancel it fairly soon, uh, fairly close to the time. So we were not able to uh, organize a, a full Connect last time. But this time uh, there's a full Connect and this is the first time we're actually doing it. So. Uh, I would encourage you to provide any feedback you have uh, through you know, any means you have, you know, email or comments on Slack or wherever you, you could, so that we can learn from this experience and improve. So be, before I dive into the keynote, I'd like to uh, say a big happy birthday to Linaro, to everybody at Linaro, because we're, this year we're 10 years old. So Linaro was started in June, uh, 2010. Uh, and of course, we have done a whole lot within this 10 years. Within the slides, I have a, a graph that I've got from a uh, Linux contribution page where they computed uh, all the contributions between 2007 and 2019, uh, where in terms of individual companies, Linaro ranked five in terms of the total uh, uh, patches that that we sent to to you know through. Of course, Linaro didn't exist in 2007. We only started in 2010. So if uh, if the stat is about 2010 to 2019, we might probably you know we might run run even higher. Uh, that's just one number that shows how much we have contributed. Uh, in the in the slides, I have uh, somewhat more data, but uh when i was preparing uh the slides i was thinking okay so i you know need, need to do the typical thing do an intro to do an introduction of linaro talk about what we do uh, talk we have done and then talk about the future right but as time uh gets close to the to, to the time now, I started to prepare for the actual talk. I realized that we are really at a very unique time and place uh, because you know there's the coronavirus situation uh, much closer to home, to my home. There's the wildfire in California and the smoky air situation. And then there's the US e election going on. Uh, there's the US-China technology war. This, getting hotter and hotter. Uh, and there's the uh, almost ban on WeChat, which would have impacted me quite seriously. And then of course the industry consolidation and and we have heard you know the, the announcement of one of the major ones just last week. Right? So so much is happening. Uh, it almost feels like uh, what we talk about here doesn't really matter. You know, we shouldn't be talking about uh, you know, day to day business because so much else is happening seems like more important. <laughs> right. So my feeling is that the world is really changing f very, very fast, faster than I could speak. Right. So, uh, so instead of going through the slides and just run through every page, uh, so, you know, those of you who are not familiar with, you know, with Linar or who would like to uh, learn more about this, can go through the slides later, but for this real-time session, I'm just going to talk about some other things that are, you know, I think to me are more urgent and top of my mind. So, <clears throat> uh, I want to talk about really uh, the things that are changing around us and what Linaro is doing or has done, been doing or has done to counter, to, to uh, adapt for, you know, to those changes, right? And 
of course, there are many things changing around us, but I'd like to highlight a couple that I think are very important. If you think about the semiconductor field industry, right, you know, that is where Linaro uh, is playing and most, you know, most or almost all of our customers or member companies are from that particular field. If you look at that field in terms of soccer, you know, matches or soccer teams, what you realize is that many more teams and players are coming into play. And what I mean is not the typical uh, situation where a startup makes a better product and adds out a old player. It's not that sort of simple replacement. What's happening is that many companies are coming into play not necessarily replacing old players, but they come in at different angles, right? And they, they, they come, you just, you know, if you just look at the whole world, there's just so many more companies seem to be making chips, right? Making their own chips, right? And you wonder why, because in the past, if you are a system vendor, you buy the chips from some supplier and then you make your system. And if you are an operator, you buy the system from some other vendor, right? Then you build your, your, your uh, operations. But these days, almost anybody of any note is either making a chip or thinking about making a chip. And I think that there are fundamental reasons why this is the case. Number one, is that people want to differentiate their product. And people have realized that the ultimate differentiation is in chips, right? And uh, so instead of stopping at differentiating at systems level, uh, people are going into the chip, uh, even try to do customer, you know, customer design chips. The other factor that makes this interesting is that the cost of, of building customer chips is decreasing. So it's, you know, there are contract houses designing chips for it, for you, then there are contract houses making them for you, right? So it's a lot more, more affordable for companies to be designing their own chips. But that's not the only reason. There are other reasons at play. For example, by making their own chips, is one way of securing access to intellectual property, right, and to supplies. And if you have watched uh, the recent uh, US-China technology war, you will realize that that's an important part of the equation that people are calculating every day now, right? That's a fairly recent uh, consideration, but it's an important one. So. Companies, people, you know, left and right, they're they're coming into this field, and they have an inevitable impact on what's happening. Because number one, there's certainly more companies competing, but more importantly, if they're buy, do, doing their you know, buying their own chips and instead of you know doing their own chips instead of buying from somebody else, that has a huge impact on the other people who used to sell chips, right? So. Uh, so that's really changing the landscape for us. And another uh, observation is that if you consider ARM ecosystem as a whole, uh, it's no longer the case that the major players are just you know software, just are hardware vendors, right? Because software vendors can also play a very important role uh, because because the variety and diversity of different device types and applications that is supported within the ARM ecosystem, anybody who has a major software play occupies a specific, you know, very important place in, in, in that space. So, uh, so we need to enlarge our, our scope to, to uh, look at not only the existing longtime semiconductor players, but also the new entrants, plus all the software vendors that are playing in this space, right? So what are we doing to adapt to this sort of change, right? So, so I'm going to speak to several points. Number one is that we are now examining, you know, we, if we look at the ARM ecosystem, 
we find that it's not a linear system where it's ARM plus all the people who license from ARM. It's really a very complicated ecosystem where there are other companies and entities in that system that has their own little eco ecosystem. I say little, I'm just sort of a figuratively speaking, they're not necessarily small, right? They, you know, they can be very, very large, but there are other players other than ARM who occupy very critical spaces. And we call this company, you know, we now in, in, internally call these companies franchise companies because they own important franchises within the ARM ecosystem. Now, you know, anybody who makes products or what, you know, hardware or software that attract a lot of followers and collaborators, those are the companies that own franchises, right? So, so, so the number one thing that we are going to do is to be squarely focused on engaging with franchise companies, right? Uh, by the way, so as I said be, be, before, a franchise company doesn't have to be a SOC vendor, right? Uh, a software company can equal, you know, can be an equally important franchise company. The second uh, step that we're we're doing to meet this new challenge is that earlier this year we made sig significant changes to our membership model and structure. So we now have a very simplified and streamlined, clear model where we have the four tiers, the core membership, the club membership, the group membership, and then the project membership. And for people who would like to learn more about the details, uh, you can just email us and we'll be happy to have a conver conversation. But the short uh, uh, description of this is that it's very simple, uh, very streamlined. It allows companies large or small to be able to be engaged with us at, at different levels. And so this, we hope, we encourage many more companies to come and work with us. And the third uh, point about how we are changing is that we're also very focused on delivering value to our members or to our customers. You know, Linaro over the last 10 years have accumulated lots of know-how, lots of you know, expertise. We have lots of maintainers working for us. You know, we have you know, over 100 maintainers uh, in various projects, if you're counting uh, all the member Signees, you know, member engineers and the signees with us, right? So it's a more, more, uh, more than hundred maintainers in over forty projects, right? So Linaro has a lot of uh, capabilities, where some of those have been uh, inhibited in the old, in, in the previous world, right? So what we are trying to do currently is to unleash them, so that we can do more for our customers for. Our, members. And so in the coming year, you will see uh, major actions happening, ha ha you know, uh, happening there. And I've taught in the abstract for, you know, for a few steps that we're, we're making to change to the new world. But let's use, use an example. For example, take Google as an example, right? So Google is not a traditional semiconductor company, right? Well, it may or may not make chips. I will leave that to to other people to speculate on, but Google became a core member at Linaro this year, right? And that's really a very significant piece of news because previous, previously, prior to Google, all the core members of Linaro have been traditional SOC vendors. The fact that Google became, became a core member uh, means several things. One is to us, Google owns multiple important franchises within the ARM ecosystem. Android is the most e obvious example, right? Uh, all the smartphones use, you know, 90% or more smartphones in, in the world use Android and, and Android phone runs on ARM chips, right? So Android is a clear example, but of course you have Chrome OS, you have 
a number of other things that Google does that each can be a, a very important franchise. So, so if Google owns multiple franchises within ARM, the other direction of this is that what Linaro does is that we can serve Google very well by not only working on the franchise pieces that Google has, but we can also work with them to serve their community, right? So this is where Linaro adds a lot of value, right? So uh, I'm not singling, Google, singling out Google because Google is large, but just this is a very timely example of what where we can do when we look at the, the franchise model to see which companies are doing important work and how we can work with them to bring their customers uh, into us. Right. So uh, one other aspect I want to talk about is how we are changing is that Linar has made important steps uh, recently in the recent months in terms of opening up our projects and processes. What this means is that basically anybody from anywhere in the world could participate at different levels to in various projects. So if you are interested in the project that we are doing, you quite possibly you will find the project page completely open. So you, you can see the schedule, you can see the technical specification, you can see what is being discussed, you can see what is being designed or what is being worked on and you can participate. So this is very important because we want to really enlarge the engagement space for Dinaro beyond the member, member companies. Of course, we'd like to have more member companies, but, but beyond that, we'd like to be able to engage with other people as well so that not only we can help them, but they can help us and so we can help each other. Okay? So that's a very important thing that we are in the process of opening up many of our projects. So what this means is that going forward, we will have, we'll hope for is more members and more participation from members and non-members. And we are, we would like to create more values for our members. And uh, uh, by next year, hopefully we might even see each other in person. Maybe we will, we will have a, a in-person uh, connect. So uh, given the 25 minute slots, I can't re really talk about many of this you know, in more depth, but the slides uh, deck has a little bit more background. So for people who like to check out more, either check, that, check, check out that deck or come to linaro.org. Before I uh, finish the talk, I'd like to thank our event sponsors, Arrow and Arm. Thank you for making this event possible for us. And I, I'd like to also thank the organizers, uh, the, the uh, people who have submitted papers and who are giving talks. Uh, you know, you spend lots of effort and make this possible as well. And finally, I'd like to send, send attendees for <clears throat> making Leader Connect part of your schedule. I know how precious time is. So, sorry, I forgot where my water bottle is. So, <coughs> so I'm, my throat is, is getting up. So finally, I hope you enjoyed this week. And like we, again, we'd like to hear you. Uh, please provide us with any feedback you have so that we can improve. Thank you. <laughs>